Hello folks, I actually have a pretty long topic to discuss, zero trust. Um, and when it comes to cloud, what does zero trust mean? Well, historically, zero trust was built around what you had control over, and that was in the world of on-prem. The ability to micro-segment your network so that way if there is a threat of any sort, it is mitigated. So how do I replicate some of the same things when it comes to the cloud? Um, and truly, when it comes to cloud or in today's world, our cloud native world or our cloud generation world, um, the perimeter that we have to protect is less about the building or a, a physical area and more about data. Data is our new perimeter. And if we just look in the past few days, I don't even know when you're watching this, but I can almost guarantee in the past few days or weeks or so, there's been a major breach um, and it's about that data. And a matter of fact, even the biggest threats that we have happening in the industry, such as ransomware, um, the only reason that that's truly disturbing is it encrypts our data. Um, and it blocks us from having services to provide uh, information or services to our customers. So how do we uh, protect our new perimeter, which is our data in the cloud? Well, uh, zero trust essentially is truly about two things. It's about the data, the applications touching that data, and the users using those applications to touch that data. So when it comes to cloud, uh, just to set things in perspective, what are we talking about? We are talking about Slack, Office 365, um, Salesforce, right? Uh, this should be very familiar. Uh, some sort of a cloud repository, Dropbox, Box, even SharePoint, um, even G Suite, um, if you're using that. Uh, and then it goes into private, private cloud um, and infrastructure, right? Uh, Azure, uh, the list truly goes on. Um, I, Google obviously is a very strong one. Um, so my data is being uh, created and it is being stored in these cloud applications. Um, and we have users that we trust, right? We trust our users because they uh, follow very strict password. Uh, uh, whatever, whatever me as an organization provides them are as, as a template to use passwords, right? Um, don't use your name, etc. Has to be eight digits long. Has to use special characters. Whatever, whatever my password uh, one two three happens to be. You know my pet's name, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, so password, but the problem with these passwords uh, is that they get stolen. And a matter of fact, uh, passwords are constantly being stolen. And I know this from personal experience. Sometimes I end up using the same password on multiple applications. Horrible, but it's true. It happens. We all do it. Now, where it becomes critically uh, um, a threat or a risk to you as an organization is if people are using their personal apps credentials at work. Um, and, and as we know, with all the breaches happening, it's all circled around data and passwords. And if I lose my identity, that means you as an organization are now in trouble if I'm using my identity to access my work, my work applications, okay? So, can't trust user uh, credentials, um, can't trust applications touching your data, and always need to have visibility around your data. So let's, uh, let's figure this out. How do I secure my users? Well, there is multiple ways to do that. You have your favorite um, identity access management solution, your identity providers, right? Those are fantastic, so you need to have those. You need to have um, an IDP of some sort right, an identity provider. Um, that could be everything from Active Directory all the way to a single sign-on, and it should, it should include uh, clearly all of those, right? You have to add multi-factor. Uh, SSO is incredibly powerful, helps you, helps you in that journey, alleviates the need for passwords and password mistakes. Um, your multi-factor authentication. Now, this is all great technology, but as I call this, this is front door technology. 
meaning all this is doing is allowing me access to these applications. Once I am part of this application, then what about the trust then? Do I still trust your credentials in Slack, Office 365, uh, your, your device, right? The entity um, that's connecting to all these applications. So there needs to be continuous authentication um, and continuous risk assessment, right? So as the user is in their journey um, across the cloud, right? Imagine a use case, and, and I'm sure you all do this, right? You take a link from one of your private cloud applications. Um, maybe it's the, your, your most recent DevOps project, and you need to share some of that data through Slack to another user, um, and it never comes back to your endpoint. So uh, very cloud native, but if there's a internal threat behavior, there's threat in the cloud, such as a zero day of some sort, ransomware, any type of malware, in the cloud doesn't come back on-prem, how do you protect that? So you need to replicate uh, your on-prem security in the cloud. Um, you should always start backwards from your sensitive data um, and, and build your security posture around your sensitive data. That is absolutely the most important thing. So let's first start there. What does, what does protecting data mean? Well, first, what if I just uh, obfuscate that data, okay? You don't even know this is data. Let's first encrypt that data, right? And encryption could be either file or field level. Um, I'm always a big fan of field level encryption more so than file level encryption because I still want to be able to share some data with you, uh, be able to download reports um, and to protect me and the organization. Just encrypt the fields that are sensitive. Right? Um, and that saves you from a lot. The way you operationalize that as well um, is, is important. Uh, do not upload your security keys to the service provider, to the cloud provider that's providing you the service. No offense to Azure, no offense to Salesforce, no offense to Office 365. If I'm encrypting my data, I'm owning my own keys. I'm not going to hand my keys over to you. Um, uh, his, history has taught us that lesson multiple times. The other thing I want to do is I want to have uh, visibility of this data. And visibility uh, could mean multiple things, excuse me, uh, could mean multiple things. It could mean one DLP where I can, I have a policy that knows how identif to identify that data regardless of what form it's in. I could be data classification, so I can classify that data, right? I can run historical data scans or data scans on my historical data across the cloud, scan it, classify it, whatever it may be. Um, so whether it's classification, DLP, etc., I need to have visibility of that data wherever it goes. Um, and then I need to be able to apply intelligent policy around that data as, as it's being used across the cloud while multiple users with multiple, this is where IDP comes in really powerfully. Um, I have the context of this user, what their posture is, are they an admin, are they an exec, right? Be able to under, apply contextual policy to these users in the cloud. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I need to apply, uh, I need to understand the user's behavior in the cloud. Um, even if you are trusted to, to apply um, certain uh, configurations in Slack, share specific sensitive data from Box or download uh, sensitive reports on Salesforce, um, how do I know you're not being a malicious insider? There's ways to track that. There's ways to look at that. CASB has a very powerful uh, UEBA solution built into it, Cypher Cloud CASB Plus. Uh, please check it out. And then now that I, I, I protected my data, I have visibility of my data, where it's being shared, by whom it's being accessed, locations, I can apply contextual policy based on geo, um, user access device that they're using, managed, unmanaged. There's a whole slew of very powerful uh, granular tools that you can tweak and understand what the user's risk is and then apply policy to that, meaning um, I will allow you to access from a remote location using a BYO device, um, but if you do so, 
I, I'm going to encrypt the data as you download sensitive data from Salesforce. Um, lots of different scenarios there. So the ability to protect that data at rest and in motion, um, apply visibility to that data so, so I had know where it is, wherever it goes, um, and understand more, first and foremost what and where my data is. Um, UEBA to understand their users who are accessing it, their risk level, um, adaptive access control, so I can so I can so I can use that risk level and apply policy to it, right? We use Salesforce as a different as another example, and then uh, look. Last but not least, sometimes you absolutely have to be able to share that data. You have to share that data, and I don't mean within the organization. Um, this is why legacy data rights management or or information rights management solutions IRM have failed. Uh, because they, as every, well, as most service providers, uh, cloud service providers work, is that they will try to restrict functionality to their own domain. Um, so that's why data rights management has failed, because really I need to share my data with partners, vendors, contractors. I could share Office 365, SharePoint, um, uh, download, create data in, in my cloud, store it in SharePoint, share it with someone who happens to be on G Suite. Um, and they are not using Active Directory in the back end to, as their IDP. So then what happens? Well, data rights management falls on its face there. So uh, Cypher Cloud data rights management, super powerful solution. And the beauty of that is I had a very large retailer said, look, I have to share the sensitive data on a monthly, weekly, monthly, sometimes daily, uh, at monthly, quarterly basis and annual basis. And I want to be able to digitally shred that data um, after its time has expired. That's where digital rights management helps you. So uh, protect your data at rest, have data visibility, DLP classification, um, apply user behavior analytics so you can understand the risk of the user's entities as well as applications. I know I didn't get into that too much. Um, adaptive access control so you can apply that risk and all that context you have of users touching that data um, and then be able to terminate the session, apply, apply mul another multi-factor, apply different rights and then uh, protect that data, encapsulate that data with your, with your data rights management, and then wherever it goes, you still have that visibility and control of your data. So that is zero trust when it comes to cloud. Um, it's about securing the users as they access all these applications um, and having a, a, a wrapper around your data, my, my obfuscated data there that you can't see. So a wrapper around your data. I hope that was useful. If you have more questions, specific scenarios that you want to talk about, how to apply zero trust in the cloud. Uh, truly, there are many of them. I did go high level. I did uh, talk a bit more about framework than specific how-tos, but I'm happy to dive in deeper. Let me know. I hope you found this useful and look forward to seeing you in the future.